Hey everyone, Corey here coming in to do the energy update for the week of uh, September the 16th is today I'm recording this. So following us all the way into the 23rd, which also is going to overlap with the full moon. So there is a lot of energy right now. There's a lot of things that's happening. The world is noisy um, and we are seeing kind of the we're kind of seeing the best and the worst of humanity. We really are in so many ways, in so many areas. And and I ask the divine when I'm recording this is uh, what's of the highest good. It's not about shock factor. It's not about clickbaits. It's not about those things. It's what's of the highest good. So sometimes leads us all the way back out of the algorithm, <laughs> um, but that's okay that's okay because that's not why we do this and that's not why that they ask of me to do this so i really trust whatever is coming um so today's energy and the way that i'm seeing and reading through this energy and, and the message is the channeling i'm getting uh and so i i receive both so i can see through i can see the the energy and then i get the frequencies um, and I also get the channeling messages that are coming through from the divine and that give me the, the, the message of what I bring forth. So, um, today when I was, when I was about to record this early this morning, so I woke up and I really had this desire to record it early. I had to drive my husband to his workplace. He's a truck driver and, um, and he had to leave. So I had to drive him and I thought I'm going to go right home. I'm going to sit and get this done because the house is so hot. We don't have air conditioning and it is so hot upstairs in my office. So I'm going to get this done right away. And I get home and it wasn't coming. It wasn't happening. And I felt myself getting a little bit frustrated. Like, why isn't this happening? Why am I not getting this message? Where is this message? And then I, um, I really realized that what I was really picking up was a lot of the, a lot of the the ego's energy that is existing in our world right now and i thought oh there's such a rush to really be that first to be the first one i want to get this out there got to be something to say and sometimes there's nothing to say um there really is nothing to say and sometimes oh, <laughs> i got soft tissue damage in my neck and i it's a little bit better and so i forget <laughs> Um, another message, another part of the message that'll come up that I will talk a little bit about, but sometimes there's nothing to say. And sometimes we have to stop having to have something to say. It is so important to just sometimes just, sometimes there's no words. And what we're seeing, we've become so desensitized and we've become such a, a hate culture and such a, and such a, a fear culture and such a, um, a culture of, you know, you only matter if you if you think the same or you feel if you act the same or you're in the same group it's like no we all matter we all matter and because we all matter that sense of using uh discernment in our language and how we communicate is so important um and so sometimes it's best to say nothing at all if we got nothing nice to say say nothing really truly honestly like why do people feel a need to be so opinionated and that's really coming up in the message and so that was the ego that i was feeling this morning it was the fact of just there's nothing to say there's really nothing to say this you know the, it's there's just so many things that are so many things that are wrong and two wrongs never make a right there's never a way to make wrong right sitting in the problem doesn't bring solutions solutions come from our desire to bring to be in the change and to exist in the change and we have to be the change that is needed in order for the world to be the world that we want to live and exist in and so there's that is really coming up so being very aware of our ego being very aware of the ego's desires so that shadow aspect of ourselves and paying attention now last week's message has a whole lot of information that really tied into everything that has been transpiring. And it literally was the light is poking a hole in the darkness. Um, and so, and so as I started to really sit with this, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to journal. 
Well, journaling didn't happen either. I've been on the same page for four days. Um, and I write every day and I don't write one or two pages. I write 15, 20 pages every single day. And I have not been writing. I've been really sitting with this human and really sitting with healing this human things, these things that are happening in the body as the body's going through great changes and transformation and transforming. Um, if you know, if you know, deep into the, you know, 5D and about crystalline energy, then what my body is going through makes sense. Um, and I will talk a little bit about that. But back to the ego. And so everything was just like, well, I don't want to get up and clean the house. I don't want to do that work because my body hurts. And, and I'm just going to rest today. I'm not going to do it. And before I knew it, I was wiping down the windows. Before I knew it, I was spraying the bathroom sink. Before I knew it, I was spraying the toilet. Before I knew it, I was sweeping. Before I knew it, I was I was uh, filling up the, the mop water. Before I knew it, I was cleaning my hole downstairs. Very gently very slowly. Um, but it was, I'm, I was being moved into cleaning house and I was being moved into doing that. And I'm, and in my, the ego was still going of, well, I was just going to work today. I was going to do this. And, uh, I really should be over at the beach with the kids and I should be doing this and I should be doing that. And so the ego really was noisy. And it was just like, just be silent, say nothing, don't respond to it. Don't, don't agree with it. Don't argue with it. Don't let it win today. It is, it is on its little mission to be a something or to be a somebody or to be somewhere today when all we're asking is that you be with you today and just be where you need to be and we'll move you. We'll move you when the time is right. And so if we lived into the flow of being moved by, by inspiration, by what our by what just happens. You're like, I don't know why, but I just thought I would just do this. I don't know why. How am I doing this? And so if I gave into all of the ego, if I gave into the pain body, if I gave into all of those things and I wasn't fighting against the pain, I would really truly knew that I could do what was needed, that it could get done. And yes, I have the good sweaty little hair that I've pinned up to get through this, to do this today. Um, because I also can't get my arms up to curl my hair. Um, the way that I like to do my hair. But, um, and so all of this was all part of the message. And then all of a sudden I go upstairs and I'm like, okay, I think I'll just go sit outside. I think, right. I think, I think I'll just go sit outside. And before I knew it, I was turning on my, on my lights before I knew it, I was changing my shirt before I knew it. I was sitting here. Then I was going to go to Canvas because I have some posts to make. Um, and one of them is if you purchase my Everyday Goddess Oracle cards, you can get a two card for a two card um, emailed reading to you, a video emailed reading for free. If you got, you have to purchase the Oracle cards and you have to, we have to, you know, see that you've purchased them and then you will get emailed a video reading in a few days. So I'm like, I'm going to go do that. Well, that hasn't happened. Here I am right here, right here. Um, and when I sat here, I just said, well, I have nothing. You haven't given me nothing all day. Um, you haven't given, you haven't shown me anything all day. You just keep distracting me. You just keep pulling me. And it was just like, and then it just clicked. It's the ego. It's the ego. It's all about the ego. And about really, truly, our way to living our most divine, our impeccable life sometimes means getting out of our own way. And sometimes we have to really get out of our own way to allow our divine life to show up. And that's the energy that we actually have this week is we all have a to-do list. We all have a desire. We all have these wants. We all do. There's not that we're not going to have them. And so they enter in, but then the distractions happens and the things that moves us away from what we're going to do. Um, we change our mind on things and it's like, but we, and then we get so hard on ourselves because, well, I was going to do that and it didn't happen. So that means I'm lazy. That means I'm, um, I'm distracted, but are we really being, are we really distracted from the truth or are we just so distracted 
with all the noise of having to be and do and uh, and be a part of everything all the time that we are actually uh, we're actually noisier within ourselves than we believe ourselves to be that even when we're trying to make space and time and so the most valuable thing that needed to get done today in my world was obviously my home being cleaned um and not the upstairs the downstairs we there was a there was a cutoff point of where things needed to be get get done why because that's where my peace exists that's where that's where i start to feel good and that's and it wasn't that everything had to be done it was that to know that if i do that i'm out of the way and i'm not trying to create a message i'm not trying to create something is that this house could be cleaned this house could be cleared because i was so busy doing those things that i didn't have time to think about everything else that needed to get done it was moving into moving me into something that was productive but also kept me quiet and when we can learn how to be quiet within ourselves when we can learn how to not to respond to the noisy thoughts the, the mind we're not going to ever stop our thoughts and our thoughts are going to continue our thoughts go with us our soul has its own thoughts when it when it communicates when the energy communicates back it's you know from spirit world it gives us all of this information about life and about life that was lived so it doesn't forget it's not forgotten it gets transmuted and it gets transmuted into something that is more for our higher good rather than for something that that takes us farther away from ourselves because we get so tied up we get so caught up in this 3d world we get so caught up in this human existence that we live in and we get so caught up in our shoulda, coulda, wouldas, including the the thought that we need to be, that we need to comment on everything. We need to be so opinionated that if we don't like something, we have to, we have to jump, we have to jump right in. We have to get right in there. We have to post something. We have to get something out. And it's coming from ego. And if we give ourselves enough time, enough breathing space to sit back. Maybe the same message would not be entering out there because is it of the highest good? Is it really serving your highest good? Does it really do anything good for you? Or does it feed your anger? Does it feed your fear? Does it feed your disappointment? What's it feeding? It's no different than a text that you go to send to somebody and you want to send out the text and you get and you get all this message and you hit send. And then after you find out another new truth. Then you start to think, oh God, what, why, why would I have sent that? But now it's already out there. Guys, if you write the text, put it in your notes. Don't send it. Write it, write it in your notes first so there's no temptation to hit send. And then go about your day. Then go about your day. And then come back and read it again. I'm willing to bet most times you will not send it. Because if it's in the moment and it's from the ego and the ego's desire, it's often coming from a place of where our most immature self exists. It's also coming from where our greatest fears of not being enough. It is where our low self, our, our low, low self-esteem exists. It's all those parts of ourselves that gets tangled up. And, it, and it's those tangled up pieces of ourselves that have really truly been creating the world that has been really making this world uh, tick and run, but is it really working? The crow just said, no. <laughs> um, and so that was a big part of the message that was given to me was this week is to be very aware as a dog downstairs just goes, be very aware of the ego's desire, the thoughts that becomes words, um, the action that the, the ego takes and having to be busy and having to be doing something and being able to be at peace, not letting ourselves be kind of running on the guilt or running on the desire that, oh, well, my, you know, everyone is waiting for my opinion. Everyone is waiting for my message. If I didn't get a message out, Nobody would give a shit. They would go listen to another message. 
And that's a truth. Do people want to hear these messages? Yes, there's some. There's some who love to hear those messages, but there's others, doesn't matter. And if it's not there, it's not there. And if it's, and so there is no desire to get something out. And because I didn't respond from ego, then I sit and I thought, well, there's nothing. I'm, I have nothing. I'm silent. And then I realized, like I said, it, that it was about the ego um, and about how powerful that unhealthy side of our ego can be, that it can really truly have us so driven, has us so pushing through, have us doing the things that are not really for our highest good. They're not really taking us towards our true destiny. They're taking us down that path that gets that's bumpy and messy and causing us to really truly have to tumble and fall into areas where it should have been a little smoother sailing because life is so much more simpler than that. Life really is so much more simpler than that. And in that moment of doing all that work, I felt something come online that is really hard for us to be able to contemplate as being enough in our lives. And it was contentment. Okay, so I just had to pause <laughs> and go downstairs because my two little tiny Yorkies and my cat all just got in a big fight downstairs and just snarling and attacking each other. Yeah, that's how big ego is. <laughs> that's how powerful that energy is this week. Don't get caught up in it <laughs> because it is everywhere in my nice clean house downstairs that's all peaceful they get into a fight and i think it was the cat who provoked it but they all get into a fight now they're all got themselves wore out now they're all licking their feet and um because i had to separate them now they're all up here <laughs> that's the energy and it's truly is the energy and that energy exists and so the thought of being content and allowing ourselves to be content is it's a goalpost that is so far away. And so how many times when you set your goals, do you set your goal to be content? Because we have been programmed and conditioned that content is not enough. Content is not enough. That we just be content with, um, with ourselves. And with, with parts of our lives and content doesn't mean complacent. It doesn't mean that we stop dreaming. It doesn't mean that we want more. It doesn't mean that. It means that we stop giving the ego control over our lives and that we don't let the ego be in control. There is so much aggression and aggressive energy that is in this energy, but it's also being so cloaked in the divine and there is a such a almost like um it feels like there's such a need to really truly be in protection um and to slow it down so contentment content with who we are content with with ourselves content with sometimes being okay to stay silent because it's bringing us back and where this energy and where all this is going is back into this center of self and with this, with the divine self and with the self that is so connected to the soul that the soul knows that wherever we are, whatever we've got going on is that often your, our opinion is not going to change it because it has to unfold itself and the soul self and the divine and God source, creator, some moon stars, whatever it is for you, um, ultimately knows that this is the cycles, right? And this is, this is things that are playing itself out because the ego and the shadow self has, you know, the, the go, the ego and the imposter light has been at war for so long with itself that it re doesn't realize that everybody and everything that it's that it's looking at is just a reflection of self. 
And so there is these. And so when I realized this morning that this was that I would get here whenever the time was right. And I would just be content with the fact that I would be guided to give the message whenever there was a message, instead of me feeling like I have to create a message instead of like, there's always has to be a message. No, sometimes there's going to be no message. And sometimes it's going to be a messy message. Sometimes it's going to be a well orchestrated message. And other times it's going to be something that has a big wow in it. But this one is all about ego and contentment. And so we have ego over here. And the sense of contentment is, is the sense of accepting that this version of ourself exists. But we don't let it run our lives. And the moment we start, we stop letting this version of ourselves run our lives, we recognize that it would be no different than giving a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, the key to the world and say, here, you run the world. What do you want to do? How would you like to see the world ran? What would you like? And and of course, that it'd be like Willy Wonka and the ch chocolate factory, right? It would be just this explosion of all of these desires. Whereas if that key were to be taken and it was put into the maturity of ourselves, emotional intelligence, which is why right now my emotional intelligence masterclass, or I think it's a masterclass, is free, that you can go in and listen to it for free, for a reason. And it's and it's so that we can really truly mastering those emotions allows us to to really truly know that I can dive deep, be into what is triggering me without reacting and responding from the same version that existed in the experience 30, 40 years ago, that uh, my emotional intelligence will guide me through to find the place of contentment that whatever I do, whatever I speak, wherever I show up, I'm content with that version of that self, that there is nothing, no trail of anger. There's no trail of disappointment. There's no trail of guilt. There's no trail of, of there's no shadow, right? There's no trail of something that is, that is trailing behind that then becomes like a boomerang energy that leaves me out of peace with myself. And that every time we move forward into being able to come into being at peace with ourselves is that that's the place of where my happiest and my most joyful exist. Because we're on our way somewhere and we're on our way somewhere that can be really, really good, really great. And the place of where we're on our way right now and where we're moving into really truly comes into that full moon energy which is another, I think it's a Capricorn. I believe it's Capricorn full moon, which is also a book moon. Um, and so this full moon that is coming up is about kind of the ending of a cycle of the pet, whatever has been at, you know, a rain, a 16 year rain. And, and so this is bringing about some big changes. And we're just at the point of where frustration comes in of where, you may feel, like I said, that desire to just jump into action. You just want to, you know, kind of sometimes want to bring everybody into the fold of whatever you got happening, whatever you're doing. Um, you feel like you have to be responding. You feel like you have to get involved in everything. You feel like all those things. And the reason why you're feeling that energy is because there is powerful, forceful energy that is coming in that is to be used to reach our goals and our destinies. But if the if this old egoic way, if the old unhealthy ego self is the version of self that brings, that moves into taking over, then what happens to what is to begin for the next cycle of our lives? It'll just be a repeat. It is the viruses of the mind. And it is the things that keep us from living our best and truest life. And so is my goal for the next 16 years of my life to, to mop my floors, to clean my toilets all the time? No. Is my goal for the next 16 years of my life to not to feel the need to jump into action and respond out of fear, out of this thought that, oh, I got to do this. No. My next 16 years 
is so that I can maintain and restore a healthy relationship with myself and trust and have faith into in the silence that sometimes I can sit quietly, calmly, and be very content with just who and what I am in those present moments and know that the universe will move me, that I don't have to keep trying to force life. And that is the key. And it's about not being, not feeling like you have to force life, force your opinions down somebody else's throat, um, you know, push, pushing that agenda, whatever that may be. It's like if the whole world could just finally get over itself. And that's exactly what we got. Get over yourself. It is really time to get over yourself. It is really time to get over that self and to be able to start to climb into a relationship with that divine self. And this is where a lot of people get mixed up with the relationship with the divine self. When we begin that relationship with the divine self, then they go seek something else. I got to go find something. I got to go be a part of something. I got to go. No, sometimes it's that relationship is a sacred relationship. And it's not the relationship that you need to, that you need someone else to tell you how to be in it. So you got to be quiet enough to allow that relationship to unfold, to allow that relationship to, to really truly communicate back to you what it has been waiting a lifetime for you to do. I'm waiting a lifetime for you to accept, waiting a lifetime for you to let in, waiting a lifetime for you to see, waiting a lifetime for you to just let the light in, to stop running, to stop chasing, to stop feeling like you had to be loud, stop pushing, stop all of those things. And so it brings about the stop and just like, let me, allow me in. Allow this divine to work through you and for you that is still of you, that it is you. It is a part of you. It was never not a part of you. It is where, it is why we have our gifts and we have our gifts so that it can help to cultivate and create a healthy, beautiful life with yourself. And that brings us back into then being able to bring about the maturity so that the ego, which is what it's designed to do, is to help us to grow, evolve, to motivate us, to make us feel the desires of what life has for us and what life has in store. But nobody is going to open the door and take what is yours. Nobody can take what, what is, has been designed for you. Nobody can step into your light Nobody can overpower you. It is your own ego, but it's also the egos of others that make it harder for other people to then step up when you spread false stuff about somebody else. When you when your objective is to destroy another person, when your objective is to hurt another. Why did I step away for a long time? Because I could not handle, I could not handle the toxicity that exists in a place that is supposed to be filled with love and light because the egos the ego desire to be somebody or to be seen because the unhealed that many including myself in my early days held within myself was i have to be somebody special or you have to get that opinion out or i have to continue to be angry at somebody Hate spreads hate. And this is where this shift comes. If we can be content with this version of ourselves and let it sit still long enough for this divine self to really truly connect, plug in, that we can get plugged into this divine self, and I'm going over the shoulder, then this divine self really reveals to you how you've overdone it, how you've overworked, how you've overgiven of this of this energy to areas where it should never really matter and what really matters and what's really important and so as i said i would talk a little bit about the health so all of this health journey and every time i get back up something else knocks me down that's in the energy that's all out there and it's because this body 
is not the workhorse that it once believed it was. And because I believed I was the workhorse, I needed to be available to everyone, to everything. I needed to be out there. That's ego. I needed to, you know, work 15 hours a day. And if I work 15 hours a day, I'm going to be rewarded for that. Well, at the end of it, at the end of all of that, the only, re the only reward I got was one I didn't want. And that's, that was the broken down body. There was nothing special of it. Did I do great things? Yes. Did I have successful moments? Absolutely, I did. But could I have still had those and really, truly not believe the nares? Could I have had those and have another life? Could I have had those and had holidays and and maybe had, you know, had a sense, a better sense of worth? Yeah. And so all of this and all of this is saying to me, you can't live the life you once lived. You don't have the energy or the power. That's not how you were designed. And so in the natal chart and looking at my Saturn and really my Saturn is in Taurus and all of that part of myself, the first time I ever read that people would sometimes think that you were lazy because you would only, you would have to do things in peaks only when you had the energy and then you'd have to rest again. And then you do things again. I started to cry and I thought, Oh my God, I've been trying my whole life to push through. I've been listening to that, that voice in my head that says, just get up, just go do, because it was so filled with thoughts that became words of somebody else for so long that it literally was controlling my life. I believed I was that person. I believed I was to be that workhorse. I lived as that. I thrived in it. I took great pride in it. I had false confidence in that. And then when it all crumbled, the sense of confidence left. And I never had confidence in her the same way. I stopped trusting in her the same way. And not that I didn't love her. I had learned to have deep compassion. And I start saying to that self, you, are you sure you could really do that? And so a few weeks ago, we needed the shed clean. We had, a, we had an issue in the shed. And I'm like, I need to do this. And it did need to be done, but did it need to be done in such an aggressive way that where I give my all for so many hours that it was an overkill. So every time I would hear, stop, 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 slow down. And then I would hear the other voice said, just get it done. If you get it done, it's going to be done. That's the old programming. So there's static of the old programming that always creeps in, but the divine self was going, it's okay. It's not done today. It's okay if it waits. It's okay if it's that everything can be done another day. But the ego, the ego is so powerful. So here we are in our ego, which is, which only it, it's, it's funny how it has so much power yet. It's so, dis, it's such a disempowering energy. Then we have our gifts, right? And the sense of this gifted version of ourselves and what those gifts are for. So that softness of the self that exists, that gentleness, that kindness, well, that's part of that gift to really truly feel what others are feeling, to feel what the other is feeling, the other version of self, and to be able to then know that if you were to incorporate those gifts within self, and one of those gifts is the ability to be able to find the gift in contentment, that you don't have to keep pushing because what is destined is so here already. It's not out there somewhere. It's here. It's waiting. It's in waiting. It's waiting for the divine self. It's waiting for this, waiting for us to slow down. It's waiting for us to stop pushing so much. It's waiting for us to stop looking into the reflection of something or someone else. It's waiting. And so this energy and this push and all this healing that's happening in the body is so that this body lives as if it lives in this new energy and it lives in this new truth. And it lives in breaking free of all of the old karmas, all of the old stories, because it's now listening to the soul. I already did that. I did that in this life. I did that in that life. I did this in another life. And so if you ever want to explore that self, book yourself in for a self-healing or a past life healing with me. 
Stop looking at things as if it's that's ludicrous. That don't make sense. No, you, no, it don't make sense. But there's something so powerful in it that makes it make sense, that it makes our healing make sense. So we discover the whys to why you do the things that you sometimes do, why you jump back up, why you run to do the things that you feel like have to be done right now. The panic, the panic button. If we could just eradicate the panic button and we stop panicking and responding to the panic, or we give ourselves permission to go back into the back door of the panic button and see what's really behind there. And when you can see what's really behind there, you'll discover a new truth. And so this week's energy holds a lot because it really truly does move us beyond whatever, wherever we were in these pat in this last cycle and also be where we were in past life. And so there's a lot of old past life healing, a past life stories, a lot of karma, a lot of soul connection, a lot of deep connection that is really coming up with this week's energy. Um, I know this may sound like an absolute crazy message, but I promise you, I didn't have this message five minutes ago. I didn't have this message or in five minutes. I didn't have this message five minutes before I came in. I didn't have this message when I first sat down. I actually had nothing. So the fact that I had nothing and they had given me everything, that means I'm content with this message. They gave me everything that was needed, everything that would be needed to put out this message. And, um, and yeah, just that ability to be gentler, kinder to ourselves, to really know that there is forceful energy. I will be recording the full moon, so I'm not going deep into it, but this is the energy that we're in this week. So it's so easy to push the panic button, to go into panic, and it's harder to see our blessings. It's harder to see what really matters. It's hardly, it's harder to place value upon peace, being slowed down, contentment, but learning the power of contentment is one of the most greatest things I ever did because when I wrote the book, you can't make this shit up, which is not out yet. But when I wrote that book, when I was writing through that book, I'm like my whole life, I remember my grandparents saying, you'll always be on the run if you can never just be content. Like when will you learn to be content with you that you are simply enough? You can grow, you can do whatever, but contentment. And I chased life. And I chase things and I chase people and I chase men and I chase work and I chase diplomas and certificates. Wow. And I can fill a room full of certificates in everything you could imagine possible that I have done in my adult life. And yet, I just remember them saying contentment. And so when I wrote the book, I'm like, you really can't make this shit up. I chased all this to really find out the best thing we can be is the best human we wow. can be. and to be content and to really truly find what it means to be content because only when we become content do we actually find what peace really means and when we find that sense of what peace really means it's magical how life then unfolds for us that's what i got for you that's what i have to share with you today um, if you would love to purchase, if you would love, if you would like to purchase my books, you can go to the website and all the links to Amazon are all on there. Um, it's more than existing, my truth of existing beyond reflection and, um, and wine and chips. And I think I might only have, to, I only have two of them here. So this is my truth of existing beyond a reflection. This is wine and chips. Um, and then more than existing is not the book that's behind me. That was the original version, but there is, an, there is a revised version and it has a white on top. So go to my website, you can see that. But also my Everyday Goddess Oracle Cards. So my Everyday Goddess Oracle Cards. Oh my God. My Everyday Goddess Oracle Cards are, if you buy the deck of cards now uh, until the 22nd, I believe it is, until the 22nd, if you buy the Everyday Goddess Oracle Cards, you will receive, um, usually it could take up to 48 to 72 hours to get them out to you, but you will receive an emailed video reading from me. That will be a two card reading personalized for you from my Everyday Goddess Oracle Cards, which is valued at $44. That's the summer special that's on it. Um, that always pops up on my website when you go there. You can also just purchase that if you want that, if you've already got the cards. But those 
But if you purchase the Everyday Goddess Oracle cards, you will get the two card uh, free reading with this right now. So you won't get the video right now, but you'll get it when you'll get it after you purchase. So if you go to Corythorn slash Cameron.com, um, you'll find all of the information there. It's still under Corythorn.com too. So either link works. So yeah, and that's what I have for you. Have a beautiful week and I will see you all soon. Much love.